Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to expand upon our 10 minute game and make it into a simple RTS. We're going to add building construction. Let's begin. So one of the core elements of an RTS game is base building. Over here we have some resource nodes, a storage, and a barracks building. We want to add the ability to be able to construct more. So we're going to start off by creating multiple storages. Right now the storage is just a simple transform, so the first thing we need is to create a class to handle it. So over here a new c -sharp script, and we're going to call it our building storage. Now we're trying to create multiple storages, so the first thing we're going to need is a list to keep track of all of our storages. So in here we can simply do a private static list to contain all of our building storage instances. And in here on our private void awake, we simply add instant list dot add this one and here in case this is the first one let's simply do if it is no we instantiate the list okay okay so now one of the functionalities of the storage is for the workers to drop off their resources so let's make a function to return the closest storage so in here we simply do a public static function we're going to return a building storage and we're going to call it get closest now in here we're going to receive a vector3 for the position that we want to test the closest to and as a helper function let's also do a public vector3 to return our position. So in here just some simple code to get the closest. Okay, so we cycle through our list. If we do not have any closest, then this one becomes the closest. If we do have a closest, then we check to make sure that this particular index is closer than the closest. And then we swap out the closest, and that's what we'll return. Okay, so we have the basics for our building storage class. Now we need to modify the worker to be able to work with this instead of a transform. So here is our worker code, and down here we have a state called moving to storage. And here he just has the game handler to give him a storage transform. So we're later going to modify this function and it will return a building storage, building storage. Then we simply test the distance dot get position. Okay, so we are doing exactly the same as previously, except now we are using a proper class. So we simply test if it is close enough. If it is, he drops the goal and goes back to idle. If not, he moves towards the storage position. Now we could either modify this function right here in order to ask the game handler to return a building storage, or we can just directly ask the building storage class using the function that we wrote, our get closest, and we give it our position. So now here in the editor, let's just drag our script onto our storage transform. So drag it onto there, okay. And just like that, everything should still be working exactly the same, except now it uses a proper class instead of the transform. So let's see, hit play. Okay, there he is mining, and yep, he went to storage, he dropped, he added the goal, and everything worked perfectly fine. Okay, so now that we have this working, let's try creating a storage from code. In order to do that, the first thing we need is to convert this into a prefab that we can later instantiate. So here is the prefab pf storage. And now on the storage class, let's create a function to create a new storage. Okay, so that's it, very simple. We just instantiate the prefab. Now let's add the prefab onto our game handler. So in here, we're going to add a reference that we're later going to ground. And now here on start, let's instantiate a new transform. Okay, and let's see if they're using both storages. All right, he used that one. Now he went to mine that one, and now he used that one, which is the closer storage. All right, so we have both of our storages working at the same time. So now that we can create multiple storages, let's deal with construction. So over here, we're going to have a new class to deal with the building construction. Let's call it a construction area. So for the visual, let's just use a random blue square and add a new prefab. So we have this prefab with a blue square and our script attached to it. So onto our script, we're going to set up the construction progress using ticks. Then the worker will increase the tick count, and when the tick count goes above the tick count max, it will be constructed. So for that, we're going to need some variables. One for the current construction tick, 
then one for the construction tech max then we're going to have a public void add construction tick and let's also do a public float get construction tick normalized so in here we just increase the construction tick and on the normalize we simply return the construction tick divide by the construction tick max now again, these are two integers. Since we want to return a float between zero and one, we have to convert one of these values into a float. So we can simply multiply it by one F and right now the result will be a float. Now we're going to make it so that when the construction tick is completed, we trigger an action. So let's also store a private action, which is on the system namespace for the on construction complete. And in here, if the construction tick if it is bigger than the max, then this has been fully constructed. So we trigger that one, and then we need to destroy this construction area. Okay, so this is some pretty simple logic. Now let's add a create function so we can spawn a construction area. We're going to do very much the same thing that we did for the storage. Now in here we're going to need more than just the position, so let's also receive a vector3 for the size of our construction area, an int for the construction tick max, and finally the action for the on construction complete. And in order to pass these values into our class, let's add a public void setup function. Okay, so here it is. First, we have our public static create function, which takes a position size, construction tick max, and on construction complete. We instantiate the prefab. We grab the component from the transform, and we call the setup function and pass in these values. Then these values get set locally. And then all we need to do is trigger this function. And when it passes the tick max, it will trigger the on construction complete. All right, so let's set up a simple test to make sure that all of this is working. First here on the game handler, we need another reference to the prefab. Okay, so now down here, let's create a construction area. We're going to give it a size of, let's say, 5.5. Then for the tick max, let's say 50 ticks. And since this is just for testing, let's pass in a function. And we're going to use the CM debug class. Again, this is part of the CodeMonkey utilities that you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. So in the class, we have a very nice text pop-up function, which pops up and it's perfect for this testing. Okay, so we have correctly set up our construction area. Now let's grab a reference to this object. And now let's make a function periodic, which again, part of the CodeMonkey utilities, and we are going to create, it will trigger an action every 100 milliseconds. So every 100 milliseconds, we are going to add a construction tick to our construction area. And supposedly after 50 ticks, the construction area, the prefab should be destroyed and we should see a pop-up up here. So let's see. Okay, so there's our construction area. Now if we wait five seconds, we should see, yep, there you go. There's the pop-up and the construction area has been destroyed. Now in here, let's also just add a very simple progress bar so we can actually view our progress. Okay, so here is a progress bar using the world bar class, which is part of the CodeMonkey utilities, and it's very simple to add a simple bar. And when we add a new construction tick, we set the bar size to the construction tick normalized. Okay, so there's the bar, and as you can see, the progress is increasing when it reaches the end. Yep, there you go. Okay, great. So we have everything we need to make this work. So now all we need is for the worker to be the one that calls the add construction tick. So back into our worker class, in here, let's add a few more states. So we add going to construction area and building construction area. Okay, so we have a function to set our construction area. We set the member variable, we set the state to be going to construction area and we tell them to move towards the construction area position. 
So when we are moving, let's do a simple distance check. If we are close enough, then we set the state to be building our construction area. Okay, so when we are building our construction area, we play the animation very much in the same way that we were gathering our resources. When we finish playing the animation, we trigger this action. This action will add the construction tick. Then we check if our construction area is built. If so, we set it to null and we go back to our idle state. If not, then we keep building and building and building. Okay, so all of this code should be working. Now all we need is to figure out where we're going to call this function. So on the game handler, let's make a function to create a construction area. So first we need to create the actual construction area object, which is what we were doing in here. And now in here on this action that is triggered on construction, in here we can actually go into our building storage and create a new building storage. So we create a construction area, then the construction area deals with adding all of the ticks, then when it is all completed, we instantiate a new storage. So now all we need is to actually tell a worker to go build this construction area. So we grab the closest worker, and then we tell the worker to set the construction area to this construction area. Okay, so now we have the code to be able to instantiate a new storage construction area. Now we need to call this function. So for that, let's just quickly do it on our update. So when we click on the left mouse button, we are going to instantiate a new storage construction area on the mouse worm position. Later, we're going to create an actual UI to be able to call this from, but for now, this should work. So let's see if all of this code is all working perfectly. Okay, so here we are. Now if I click in here, yep, there's the construction area. The worker went there. Now he's hammering away. Every time he hammers, you can see that the ticks increase and the progress is increasing. And when it is fully done, yep, there's a new storage. And yep, he is now using the new storage. If he goes there, that one is the closest, so he's going back to that one and so on. So we now have three different storages, all of them working perfectly fine. And every time we click, we can instantiate a new one. So there you have it. We expand upon the 10 minute game by adding building construction, which lets us expand our base. In the next video, we're going to give orders to our units. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.